Hi everyone, in this problem we have to find the equation of the tangent line at three different points given these parametric equations. So before we do any of these problems, uh, let's go ahead and start by finding the slope of the tangent lines. So the slope of the tangent lines is given by the derivative. So the formula for the derivative is dy dx, and that's equal to dy dt, over dx dt. And let's just go ahead and compute it just right now. So dy dt, or actually in this case it's dy d theta, dx d theta. Ooh, close, close catch. So dy d theta is going to be the derivative of y with respect to theta. So 3 is going to go away, that's 0, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So this is 2 cosine theta. And dx d theta, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but there's already a negative here, so we're just going to get 3 sine theta, just like that. Good stuff. And um, I suppose we could just leave it like this. Sure, this is cotangent, but it might be easier uh, to work with it um, like this. I'm just going to leave it just like this. So this formula will give us the slope. at theta. Okay, so now we have to find the equation of the tangent line at negative 1, 3. So let's go ahead and, and do that one first. So let's do at negative 1, 3. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. It looks like a crayon. There we go. Beautiful. So we have the point we just need the slope. Well, this is the slope. However, we don't have the actual slope. We just have this formula. So we need to find theta. So the trick to find theta is that you have to realize that this is your x and this is your y. So you have to go back and use your parametric equations to find your theta. So let's do that. So x is negative 1, and that's equal to 2 minus 3 cosine theta. So you have to find theta in these problems by using your x and y. That's the, the tricky part. And then 3 equals 3 plus 2 sine theta. right? Just basically plugging them in to, to these formulas up here. All right, so let's see. Solving the first one, we'll subtract 2 from both sides. It's an arrow. It's my weak arrow. So minus 2 minus 2. That'll give us minus 3 equals minus 3 cosine theta. So cosine theta is 1. So we have that condition. Then here, minus 3, minus 3. That gives us 0 equals 2 sine theta. So sine theta equals 0. So we have these two conditions, and they're simultaneous. So they have to occur at the same time. Let's think. So when is cosine theta equal to 1 and sine theta equal to 0? So if you think about the unit circle, on the unit circle, cosine is your x-coordinate and sine is your y-coordinate. So every ordered pair is of the form cosine theta, comma, sine theta. So in this case, this is going to be 1, comma, 0. So it's going to be right here, right? This is the point, 1, comma, 0. Oh, and the angle here is just theta equals 0. So now what we do is we go back up here and we plug in theta equals 0. So dy dx, when theta equals 0, we get 2 cosine 0 over 3 sine 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so you get 2 times 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so you get 3 times 0. So you get 2 over 0, so it's undefined. So when theta equals 0, we have an undefined slope. Well, if you think about it, what types of lines have undefined slopes? Vertical lines. So we have a vertical tangent line at this point. That means that the line must be x equals negative 1. Again, you have a vertical tangent line that passes through this point. So if you, if you graph it, here's negative 1, 3. You have a vertical line that passes through this point. So if you just draw it, you'll see that that line 
must be x equals negative 1. So that's the tangent line. We actually have a vertical tangent line. So whenever you have an undefined slope, you have a vertical tangent line. Okay, let's do the next one. Um, I scrolled, uh, let, me, let me write down our equations again because I lost them. So our equations were x equals 2 minus 3 cosine theta. I'm just getting it from, 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 uh, from here. And y equals 3 plus 2 sine theta. Let me just double check uh, that these are correct. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, yep, yeah, good. So now we're doing it at 2, 5. So at 2, 5, so at 2, 5, so x is 2 and y is 5. We get 2 equals 2 minus 3 cosine theta. 5 equals 3 plus 2 sine theta. Okay, and again, we're going to solve for theta. So here we subtract 2. So you get 0 equals negative 3 cosine theta. Divide by negative 3, so we get cosine of theta equals 0. That's our first condition. Here we subtract 3, subtract 3, going kind of fast. This is 2 equals 2 sine theta. So sine theta is equal to 1. So these are our two conditions, cosine theta equals 0 and sine of theta equals 1. So again, we think about the unit circle. On the unit circle, what is this going to be? Well, I remember cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate. So we're looking at the point 0, 1. That's right here. Oh, yeah, that's pi over 2. Beautiful stuff. So dy dx, recall, was, let me go back up, 2 cosine theta over 3 sine theta. So it's 2 cosine theta over 3 sine theta. So if we plug in pi over 2, so if I do this, put a pi over 2 here, do this, put a pi over 2 here, just a shortcut to save room, we get 2 cosine of pi over 2 over 3 sine of pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we get 2 times 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we get 3 times 1. So we just get 0. Okay, so we get 0. So we have a slope of 0. Well, if you ask yourself, hey, what types of lines have a slope of 0? Horizontal lines. So we have a horizontal line passing through 2, 5. If you were to plot 2, 5, it would look like this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if you have a horizontal line that passes through this point, that line must be y equals 5. Right? So the answer is y equals 5. You could use the point slope formula, like y minus y1. You could do y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. You could do that in this case. And if you did that, let's just do it, you would get y minus 5, right? Because this is your x1, this is your y1, and then m is 0, and then you get x minus 2. So y minus 5 equals 0, so y equals 5. Boom, same answer via algebra. However, you cannot do this in the previous example because this formula, this point-slope formula, only works for non-vertical lines. Why? Because m is the slope. And so if you have a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So this fails. So really, the only way to do this previous part is to really think about it. That's what makes this such a beautiful question because you have to like think about uh, what's going on. The last one is a bit scary. Let's try to do it. So our point is, so at, it's 4 plus, I believe it's 3 square root of 3 over 2. Yep. So 3 square root of 3 over 2, comma 2. All right, let's do this one. So this is our x. This is our y. So we have 4 plus 3 square root of 3 over 2 equals 2 minus 3 cosine theta. And then we have 2 equals, plugging it in here now for y, equals 3 plus. So every time you do a part, like you do what you have to find theta, that's what makes this problem um, a little bit harder. This is one where people like just freak out. <laughs> it's not so bad though. So how do you deal with this? I am thinking uh, maybe to make it easier is multiply by 2. Just, just a good start. 
So let's see. I haven't done this problem in a while, so this is going to be interesting. Then you distribute the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Oh, yeah. 2 times 3 is 6. Sometimes things just work out. Subtract 4. Things are good. So we get 3. Square root of 3 equals negative 6 cosine theta. Dividing by negative 6 is going to give us cosine of theta equals, looks like uh, it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So that's our first condition. Over here we subtract 3, subtract 3, so we get negative 1 equals 2 sine theta. So sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So we have two conditions. We have uh, cosine of theta is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So we are in quadrant 3, and it looks like we are looking at an angle that is a multiple of pi over 6. How do I know that? Well, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So uh, negative 1 half is down here, and then um, cosine is also negative, so we're here. So if this is pi... Think of pi as 6 pi over 6. So the angle we want is 7 pi over 6 because it's pi over 6 more. Okay. Again, I know I'm here because uh, the y is negative and the x is negative. So 7 pi over 6 is our angle. So dy dx, which was, let's go back to this, 2 cosine theta over 3 sine theta. So it was 2 cosine theta over 3 sine theta. And we want to plug in 7 pi over 6. So what we do is we draw a line here, and we put a 7 pi over 6. We draw a line here, we put a 7 pi over 6. And now when we plug it in, and we drop the theta and replace it with a 7 pi over 6. So this is 2 cosine. 7 pi over 6. I'm going fast because this video is very long. It's already like 12 minutes. Uh, this is 3 sine 7 pi over 6. We already know what these values are because we, we pretty much worked them out up here. I mean, these are the values at 7 pi over 6. This is 2. Cosine of 7 pi over 6, we know it's negative root 3 over 2. And then 3 times and then negative 1 half for sine 7 pi over 6. These cancel, so we get negative square root of 3 over negative 3 halves. So this ends up being... It's going to come over here. Two-thirds, negative two-thirds, times negative root three. This is two square root of three over three. I'm going to circle that. That is our M. That is our M. Good stuff. So finally, we can use our formula. So Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. Okay. And then so our y1 is just 2. So y minus 2 equals our m, which is 2 square root of 3 over 3. And then x minus and then 4 plus 3 square root of 3 over 2. And you know what? We could leave it like this, or we can add the 2 and distribute this. Let's just, I'll just, uh, you know, let's just leave it like this. Let's, let's call it good. That's good. If you wanted to solve uh, for y, you could add the 2 and distribute this, but really there's there's no need. It's just a, it's a big mess. <laughs> it's a big mess. So the most important thing in this problem is the process, right? Because you start off by uh, computing dy dx, and you use the same dy dx for every problem. And in each part, basically, you use your x and your y to find your theta, and then you plug back, back, back in to find your slope. In the first case, uh, we had an undefined slope that gave us a vertical line. In the second case, we had a slope of 0 that gave us a horizontal line. In the third case, we just we had a regular non-zero slope. And so we used the formula, and we just got a regular, uh, we got a regular line. So, yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.